Well, it's another day and time for another court case as we look at another iteration of Predaking. This one goes way out of left field when it comes to third parties because we're going to start off with this guy. It is the oversized Jin Bao KO of the MMC Feral Rex member repainted as Nero Rex Talon. A third party representation of Predaking. And He's going to kind of be the source of a whole lot of conversation because we're going to use him as a basis to sort of discuss Feral Rex, discuss if the KO has merit, and we may even touch on a little bit of TFC's Ares in the process as we dig into the latest court case in this Got But True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, as always, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. Please like, comment, share, and more important than ever, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. Join us. Stay with us. Spend a little bit of time around here. Let me know your thoughts. Of course, check me out everywhere. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor. A couple of shout-outs before we dig into this guy. Tashan Simpson, Starfighter-14, Bob Watanabe, and... Core Duo. Thanks for kind of joining us here. Thanks for kind of hopping on board. And of course, thank you for dropping by today. So this guy here. Let's get a couple of things straight. By rights, the actual version of this figure is colored pretty well in representation of the character known as Dive Bomb. And it's about Voyager size. This is naturally bigger. This is more of a leader class size, but we'll see all about that a little bit later on. He has fantastic articulation and kind of unique detailing. The KO is full of kind of softer, rounded curves, more than the official version from MMC. That one has sharp lines, excellent detailing. It's very stunning. It's very crisp. This is good, but of course that is the real deal, even though it costs a lot of money. And hey, I'm a dude who has a family, I have a job, I have bills to pay. It is what it is. Nevertheless, is the official worth roughly a hundred bucks? Maybe. This is a far less expensive option, and we're going to see how he also fits in. Perhaps if you're in the market for a Voyager class figure, and you want it at a little bit more of a reasonable price, maybe the TFC offering is the way to go. Stick around. I hope that this doesn't get too confusing as we cover a whole lot of things with this guy. So let's head over to the table for all of the details now. Okay, so we have another bird arm, I suppose you could say. And <clears throat> this version of Dive Bomb, of course, is going to kind of be the basis for uh, a more extended discussion as previously noted. I already looked at the Unique Toys uh, iteration of this character in episode 356, but of course that's not to everyone's taste and arguably he is too small. Now we're going to look at this guy as we normally do, talking about paint apps, posability, playability, and transformation, but we're going to do it in a reverse order, and on some of those we're going to kind of mention some other things. You see, I'd love to take a look at the official um, Feral Rex combiner, or even Nero Rex, but that comes with a hefty price tag indeed. So we will start here and do the best we can. Stay with me now. This guy is an all right arm. It's okay, but it's only okay. Yes, it's bulky. Yes, the plastic feels fantastic. But this is really about as much of a bend as you're going to get for an arm. It attaches right here, and this whole joint, this combiner joint, is extremely tight. Uh, he does have a bicep swivel, which is nice, and the hand would sandwich in between the 
ankles again, but we'll look at that later. His tail feathers can stay on the back or if you are so inclined for whatever reason you can put them out to the side. No problem there at all. That being said, if you don't even want him to be an arm, and this is where the entire feral rex or nero rex uh, combiner becomes very stylized, this guy doesn't need to be an arm. He can also be an entire backpack. But before we get to that, let's take a look at his accessories and sort of get them out of the way first because one of them in particular is very important to kind of continuing on here. First and foremost, he comes with these two swords and they're colored all right. The silver has a bit of a blue tinge to it here. Um, I think the actual ones, the official ones, are colored differently, but they're still basically the same sort of styling. They look cool and they certainly do look ferocious. He also comes with this glorious blaster and I love that metallic purple. Now, the actual version, if I'm not mistaken, is more of a gray type of color and that's that's probably more realistic if you know huge alien robots can be realistic but it, it looks like this it's pretty fantastic I totally dig it by the way that piece there can open out if you are so inclined and last but most assuredly not least is this gorgeous wing pack it can go directly on the back of Leo Ducks, their version of Razor Claw, via this peg here. But while this can be a backpack on its own, it does not at all need to be removed from the dive bomb talon character because he as a whole can become a backpack. I will point out here though that the wings can move, you know, back rather far if you're inclined um, they can move up and down each of these can indeed open up and splay out to, to look more menacing and if you wish the entire thing can come down like that so it's a very versatile backpack you may notice that I'm still at a distance here and there's a reason for that. Of course, this is him once again in arm mode and I already mentioned that he, he attaches there, but I said he can become an entire backpack and indeed he can. So how do we do that? We basically straighten up his legs and his waist. We turn them like this. We bring the head back and then we come to the front and we open up that section and we have another peg right there. So now this can plug into Leo Ducks. The reason being because you can take the wing pack and you will notice that we still have the slot here. We have four smaller holes on the back. On the wing pack itself we have that big peg and we have um, four, uh, four? Yeah, four smaller pegs. We can take the entire wing pack and put it on like that. If we splay these out. Now, as a whole, he can serve as the back of our Predaking combiner. Very interesting take on this character and that as an option. Uh, I like it. it, it's different, it's stylized, but it, there is something cool about it. Now since we're here, we might as well go into his bird mode, wouldn't you agree? Well, it's pretty simple up top because the head is really done. Bring this peg down, close that down. We'll just bring up the bird head there for now. We take the talon sections here and bring them down all the way. Open it out. Bring it down all the way. Open it out. And you can even, if you're inclined, though they're very tight here, you can split 
his bird mode legs and in the end have a bird that looks like this. It is amazingly imposing and again solid to stand. I totally, totally dig this. I think it's a really cool take on this character. Now just to make life a little easier, let's bring the wings down. And we're going to bring this in just a little bit to get a closer look on him. And in this mode, if there was ever a bird of prey, this has to be it. I absolutely dig it. It's really easy when you're in armor mode to go to the full backpack mode and to go, of course, to the bird mode. You don't have to move much of anything at all. But what about going to the robot? Let's do that now and then we can finally get into some discussion and some grading of this guy. And you'll notice now that we're kind of panned out again because this guy really gets kind of big. All right, so where do we begin? Easy things first. Take the claws, bring them back up, take the claws, and bring them back up for now. We can even straighten these down. We come up here and we bring that arm down and bring the hand out, we bring the arm down, and the hand out. That's pretty easy to do. We bring up the head, and the face is up under the mouth. It's a little challenging to get out. Uh, and finally, and we can bring that down over the top of his head, no problem. There's the upper body done. We're going to angle these wings back a little bit. And then we're going to deal with the hardest part of this guy, which still isn't really hard, and it is his legs. And for the legs of this guy, it's actually easier if you have the backpack off at this point, but we will persevere. Open out the back flap, and you can see that there's a foot attached to it. You do the same on this side, you open out the back flap. And then you rotate down the leg. Basically what you have is the entire shin and calf folding up over the thigh. You do the same thing over here. You close that up and you close that up. You pick up the foot and loop it down around. You pick up the foot and loop it down around. And you'll notice we have a bunch of screw holes here. Uh, we turn those to the back so that you don't see them. Turn that around. And then on the side here, we actually have a couple of pieces that rotate out and kind of fill in the thighs so that they don't look as thin and sort of spindly. A little hard to get those pieces out. But in the end, I need to put these talons up on his knees. And I need to balance him because his weight with that backpack is something to deal with. But in the end, here we have Talon. Now let's kind of bring this in closer so that we can talk about him and get a good look at him. Now the guy looks glorious. I love this paint scheme, but of course, this isn't really the paint scheme. As it is, it's a 10 because the purple is so glorious, but it doesn't look like the character. Let's talk about that ever so slightly here. The uh, I guess regular colored KO or the official version is indeed colored pretty accurately. You have the orange and the black up here. I mean, where it's black it would be orange and where it's purple it would be black. Uh, instead of silver wings we have gold. Uh, we have orange thighs. The lower legs are pretty much all black except this purple down uh, on his lower shin would be gold. Uh, the feet would be black, the rest of the leg black, the arms largely orange, except for the gray hinges, they would be black. On his chest where we have the purple, 
it would be yellow, and the rest of his torso would really be black, and his uh, pelvis would be red, as it should be, with a orange and red face. Why do I bother to mention that? Because it's pretty close, coloration-wise, to the G1 toy. Of course, in terms of the animation, just as I mentioned before, when we looked at the Unique Toys version, he would be off, and that being said, the animation was also often changing from episode to episode. So you can't really mark him that way, you can't really score him that way. That being said, the absolute silhouette and shape of the body is indeed stylized, but it is a good looking dive bomb. And undoubtedly, it's cool that we can take his um, big gun, come around to the back, we have a slot right there, and this can, whether you want to use, I guess you can use either one, there. You can slot that in there, no problem. And as for his two swords, they too can go in his hands relatively tightly. There. I mean, you can put it in his hand, no problem, as well. So for coloration, if we had the regular KO, um, paint scheme, or at least the official version, then guess what? It would be easily a nine and a half. It is a great version of this character. What about the articulation? The articulation is also very good. The head can go left and right, up and down. It's on a ball joint. We already saw how the wing pack can move. The shoulders are on ratchets, forward and back, and out to the side. I don't know about the official, I assume they're also ratcheted. We have a double elbow that is fantastic. Nothing at the wrist here, but this guy does come with alternate hands and you can pop these out and put the other ones in and then he does have wrist rotation. So we're gonna give that to him. We have a waist swivel. We have legs that can kick forward and kind of kick back. The tail feathers sort of get in the way. We have a thigh swivel, which is kind of just above the knee, it's effective. And we have a nice 90 degree ratcheted knee, as well as hinge forward and back on the feet and a little side to side. It, it, the articulation is fantastic, he is pretty solid, he feels great. I'm going to give his articulation also a nine and a half. It's pretty close on perfect. The balancing point, that's about the only thing that could be a little bit better. The transformation, again, a nine and a half. I would say with the official, probably a 10. A couple of slight tolerance issues here, but I blame that on it being a KO. Nine and a half, nine and a half, ten. 10. The Feral Rex, Nero Rex version of Dive Bomb, has to be about a 9.75, it's fantastic. Yes, the official does cost a pretty penny, but I think it may actually be worth it if you can afford it. Naturally, you could always go this route. It's far more affordable, but also upsized. And there is a regular sized KO version, but that's noted for having really poor tolerances and really weak joints, in fact, as I'll discuss later, there are certain figures that can't really even transform with him. But to focus on this guy again for a moment. He's terrific. He really is. How does he stack up? Well, here he is next to a Power of the Primes Voyager, that being Grimlock. And the regular MMC version is basically Voyager size. So this is obviously upscaled. In fact, he's about upscale to the size of a leader class figure. This, of course, being the Power of the Primes leader class evolution Optimus Prime, who is, coincidentally, roughly the same size as the Masterpiece Optimus Prime. What does that mean? That means that this oversized version of this character is pretty much Masterpiece scaled. 
maybe not masterpiece engineered, but certainly at the scale. And with as high of a score as I gave him, I honestly think he's pretty close to being able to fill that bill quite nicely, if that's what you are going for. Anyway, here we have a figure that has done extremely well, but it's also done for a very different reason than the one we looked at before. To make a comment about TFC Ares, his silhouette is also highly stylized. The coloring on the wings is probably more accurate to the animation, and he probably has the most interesting face sculpt of them all. But he does have a lot of red on his shins and on his hands. He has yellow broken up on his chest. The actual version of this guy gives us a sense of what a Voyager scale limb could look like and what it should act like. Could the articulation on the elbow be better? Yeah, sure could. But, hey, nothing is absolutely perfect. I think that for the Chug Collector and the G1 Purist, the Unique Toys way is probably the way to go. For somebody that likes something kind of completely different and enjoys a Voyager class scale, then Ares might be the way to go. But if you're looking for kind of the happy medium of going back to your nostalgia and having a larger version of Dive Bomb, then I think that Feral Rex indeed is the way to go. Well, what if you're a masterpiece collector? It got to be, at least for now, the oversized KO Jinbao version. Oh, so much to continue, so much to consider, and we're only getting started as this is the first guy from this set. And we're back here. Of course, by now, you know that I think this guy is pretty fantastic overall. I have to believe that the excellent score I gave to the KO would probably be even a little bit higher for the actual Feral Rex team member. And indeed, that would make perfect sense, would it not? Well, if you're in the market for something that can kind of at least stand next to masterpiece figures for now, I think that this might be the way to go. If you're in the market for something to go with a Chug collection, then I would say no to this offering. And of course, if you're simply somebody who thinks that Voyager class is the right size class, well, you have two options. You have the official version from MMC. You have the TFC version, which might be up your alley, even though the styling on that is definitely more unique. Oh, there are so many choices to consider. For now, I would say that this guy is a very strong start. Oh, and by the way, something that I did not mention when we were at the table, these sword pieces, they can go incorporated. The thigh fillers have holes in them that do accommodate these being pegged in. And I think that that looks absolutely fantastic. Whether you use this guy as an arm or a backpack, I think he's a win. As a standalone figure, he is a ton of fun. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy. Let me know if you think he's worth nabbing. Perhaps he fits for your taste much better. Again, I'm going to say please hit that subscribe button. Stay with us here. Have a voice. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'm going to thank you very much for spending some of your very valuable time here with me. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.